Hello everyone, it is Mark Berman from TVMI. I'm coming to you live from the Beverly Hilton Hotel in Los Angeles from the 2014 Summer Television Critics Association Press Tour. That's a mouthful. It is a mouthful. That is you a mouthful. Well. I am here with Emmett Skilton, who is the star, or one of the stars, of The Almighty Johnsons, airing on Sci-Fi. Mm -hmm. Nice to have you here. Thank you. Nice Congratulations to on the show's success. Thank you very much. Now, I want to talk to you all about the show and what other projects you're doing, and I want to do all that fun stuff. But before we begin, let's talk about your career. Okay. You began as an actor at age 15? I did, yeah. My first professional gig was uh, at the age of 15, playing a, a character nicknamed the Dutch Retard on a TV series, <laughs> a comedy TV series in New Zealand. And you were born and raised in New Zealand? I was, yes, in Wellington, New Zealand. In Wellington, New Zealand. How did you get into this business? Into the business? I mean, I, I always um, grew up entertaining my family and having right. fun making people laugh. And uh, I guess it just slowly through school, doing school productions, I realized that I didn't want to do anything else. I had no other um, passion as intense as what I do have for acting, and I just mm -hmm. made sure that it happened. Now, do you have a preference for comedy over drama, drama over comedy? I mean, you've done Shakespeare. Or yeah, I. Uh, no, I don't have a pre preference at all. It's uh, it's. I enjoy each for different reasons, and I. Uh, it really depends on the script. If the script's great, um, or the the situation's great. For example, um, with the Almighty Johnsons, not only was it great script, but it was a a concept that hadn't really been tested in New Zealand before, mm -hmm. mixing science fiction with comedy drama right. in the modern day so right. in terms of that um, I hadn't done an awful lot of, of comedy for a while so mm -hmm. jumping straight into that and being able to sink my teeth into something completely unique right. um, that was a that was a great side of, uh, of things now you've done a lot of live action stage productions yes I have yes and yeah. so that's really did you did you study the medium did you just jump into it How well I, I went to drama school in, uh, in Wellington New Zealand mm -hmm. and through that, I did a lot of theatre, right. but I'd actually done a lot of improvisation before that. Um, so similar to whose line is it anyway? Right. Um, I was studying that through high school, and at the end of every school term, so every ten weeks or, right. or three months, we would have a, um, a performance for the public, which right. would last about a week um, every night. Obviously, not a week long performance. Right. And uh, we that would be a lot. That would be a lot. <laughs> the, the, you'd learn a lot doing that. Uh, and uh, and through that, I would uh, I was exposed to stage, and I did Shakespeare through high school as well. But uh, it wasn't until I came out of straight out of high school and joined a, a theatre group called the Ugly Shakespeare Company, which takes Shakespeare's work, rewrites it, and mm -hmm. makes it accessible to high school students. Right. And I toured for six months doing that in front of oh, live audiences cool. nearly every day. And you've done a lot of TV appearances in New Zealand. I have, yeah. Shows. Now, is the Almighty Johnson your first regularly scheduled series? It is, absolutely. Yeah. And how first as a lead, it's the right. first on mainstream. And you are three seasons. We are three seasons in. Yes. How many episodes a season do you do? We the first one was ten episodes, and the other two were thirteen. So we have thirty-six. All you have thirty-six, so and third season completely shot. It now is. it's airing on Sci-Fi Friday evenings at ten o'clock. They have to promote the show. We do. Talk to me about um, your character. Tell me about the show. It's you know I was I I I've seen it. I find it very and unique. Okay. I really, it's hard to really describe it. Yeah, it really, <laughs> trust me, I know. Now that it's it's like, what TV, is it? What yeah. exactly is the show? Well, now that it's on TV, it's a right. lot easier for me to describe it to people because I say, watch this. Right. Rather than... Well, how, if you say, watch home. this, what, are you, what, what so, genre are you? So what genre it is, it's a, it's a comedy drama with um, science fiction threaded through. It's, right. It's a way of, of putting it best. It's a, it's a comedy first and foremost, and my character is... The youngest of, of four brothers and a grandfather, mm -hmm. he doesn't want to do anything with his life when we first meet him except party, get drunk, have sex with girls, or do his best to anyway. Mm -hmm. And he, he's just not at all interested in responsibility. Okay. And what he finds out on his first on the first episode, which is his 21st birthday, this family secret, which what, is what makes our show unique, and that they are, all of them, reincarnations of Norse gods. Mm -hmm. And they all find out that secret on their 21st birthday. So what the show really is at its essence is a coming-of-age story about a young guy finding his place in, in the world. Right. And uh, in a way, what we say in New Zealand, manning up. Mm -hmm. uh, so going from boyhood to manhood. And the device that our, uh, our clever writers have chosen to do that is that he's a Norse god and he has to fulfill a Norse god prophecy. <laughs> and, and by doing so, maybe he'll, he'll come into his own and... and 
both worlds. So what the beauty of this show from the get-go, uh, speaking of, from the perspective of, of a critic, mm -hmm. I always say that success breeds imitation, that when something works, everybody does it. Well, mm -hmm. this is completely unique. It hasn't really been done yeah. before, and it's successful. Yes. I mean, the Norse God thing is happening at the moment with uh, with Thor right. coming out as a, as a big blockbuster series. But yes, it is it is unique, and it is successful. And I think what makes it successful, and I, I've, I've spoken to a lot of people about this, comedy and yeah science fiction don't always pair so well as well as I think we do in our show mm -hmm. which I think is where the, the success of it really really lies right were you and a fan of the genre of science fiction growing up is it something that you not to a great extent I, I, I definitely watched I mean I watched shows like Red Dwarf growing right. up and I had I mean the science fiction shows such as Ninja Turtles mm -hmm. and played X-Men and Street Fighter which I guess you could all say is science fiction or fantasy right. at their core I grew up with that, but not. I didn't grow up with things like Star Trek, which is one of the big mm -hmm. fantasy shows. Star Trek fantasy started fantasy shows, before you, know? you were born. Yes, <laughs> but I could have easily latched on. Here's the difference between you and I. I was there <laughs> when Star Trek initially premiered, yeah. on watching it on Friday nights on NBC, thinking, "How oh, this is a little unusual." Yeah, it seems to have done all right that show. It, you know, initially <laughs> it's funny because the initial three season one was modest. You know, it stayed on the air, went away, and it's like, "Okay, Star Trek is over. Yep. It's not over." No, and it'll never be over. Now, what's the difference? So. You were telling me uh, before that you're now living in LA. I am, yeah. You, what, what's different? I mean, what's it like in New Zealand being in this business versus what it's like here? Well, for, it's, hard, it's hard to speak about New Zealand um, in a sense because I've, I've reached a level in New Zealand where uh, everyone does not, everyone in the industry does know my name and knows my right. work and knows what they're getting when they hire me, whereas right. the industry, this side of things, is... Um, I'm a fresh face and I'm a new face, right. which is right. which is quite exciting. But in terms of the industry themselves, in a in a subjective way, one one is very similar to the other, except times a million in, in terms of the opportunity I can imagine. and in terms of the the um, pure range of what is on offer and who is on offer in terms of different types of people, different mm -hmm. races of people, and it's a, it's a much bigger ball game. But at the same time, I find here to be a lot more of a proactive place. Mm -hmm. And I think that's because it is a bigger ball game. Everyone's got their A game on. Everyone is yeah. studying, learning, preparing. Um, going to the gym, for example. Right. That doesn't happen in a lot of New Zealand. Right. So everyone's trying to get to the top of their game to, to be in the best position here. Now, is this your first time at the press tour? Yes, it is. Yeah. So I've, I've, the PR rounds for the Almighty Johnsons is the first time I've I've done a press tour in the states. You look crazy here, right? Yeah, it is crazy. You know, I've been here for ten days. This is my tenth day, and you know, we report on all these things. I meet I meet very nice people like you, interesting people. After about ten days, um, I'm ready to drop on the table. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, thank you for still standing up. <laughs> I'm still standing up now. To, um, how long does it take? I'm just curious. Um, from a mileage perspective, how long does it take you to get? From New Zealand to here? It takes 12 hours. 12, oh, 12 hours. Or okay. a nap. Oh, okay. Yeah. And are you going back to New Zealand for anything? Or are you strictly here now? Yeah, I have... Uh, I'm in talks for a, a few projects in New Zealand, one of which is a big theatre show uh, based around climate change, right. which I'm, I'm quite passionate about. So uh, I'll be heading back to New Zealand in a month to discuss okay. that, and hopefully I'll be putting that on uh, the middle of next year. And is there anything there? anything brewing here for you? Little bits and pieces. Good. Yes. I'm glad yep. to hear that. Um, You've sure. gotten very good response uh, on the show. Yes. Here. Yeah. The critical response has been positive. The viewers. There's been a lot of social media tweets. People yeah. are liking it. It's been great. And again, what I think is really great about it is, you know. Um, you really can't describe it easily. You can't compare it to anything because it's very unique in its own way. Mm -hmm. Now, is the show, is it going to continue into a fourth season or is this it for the moment? Well, the nature of New Zealand television is that you never know until you know. Okay, really. so, so there's a chance for, it will for now, continue. The Almighty Johnson is considered finished. Right. But it all, all depends on popularity. It all depends on international interest. At this when stage. did the uh, production end? For the so we season? finished shooting about a year ago, Okay. Uh, I think. Yeah, and then we also made a web series after that called Gods Among Us, mm -hmm. which is on YouTube. Right. Um, ten episodes, which are about three minutes long, mm -hmm. telling the story of the Almighty Johnson, or the Johnson family, mm -hmm. from the point of view of my best friend, Zed, played by Hayden Frost. Very cool. It's a, it's a good laugh. Now, as an actor, 
Now, you're here in L.A., and the show's airing on Friday, and it's at 10 o'clock sci-fi, don't forget, folks. And you wake up on Saturday. Do you call your agent and say, how do we do in the ratings? How do we do? Do you have all nights? Are you into the numbers? Do you... Does that matter to you? No, it doesn't matter to me. I think what, what, what does matter to me is that we get enough exposure in the show that people know about it and can give it a go. Right. I, I don't mind how many people watch it or what people think of it in a lot of ways. I just I just want everyone to have the opportunity to know about it and have the opportunity to experience it if they want to. I it's totally basically. get that. I totally get that. Yeah. You know, in, 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 in the world of television today, you can get an immediate response when the show's on the air to see if Social people media. tweeting or they're talking Absolutely, about it. Yeah. You know, and I find it a double-edged sword because I find if I'm tweeting while I'm watching a show, I'm missing the show. Absolutely. But people are doing Absolutely. that. Yeah. And I think the, the nice advantage of this kind of a show, and airing on a network like Sci-Fi, is you're going to bring in a, a young base of a young viewers, which is who the networks want, who the advertisers yes. want. And the response that I'm hearing on the show thus far, I can tell you, is very positive. Right. So I thank you very much for bringing the show here. Our pleasure, really. We, we never, ever expected it to reach the place it has. Now, do so you great. yourself have any favorite shows that you like? That you have to watch. Yeah, Sons of Anarchy is oh, by far my favorite show. Yeah, I think Kurt Sutter as a as a writer puts so much rawness onto onto the screen right. that we don't often get the opportunity to see. Well, the sad yeah. news about, of course, Sons of Anarchy is going into its final season. Not necessarily a sad thing. We still got the season, season to you watch. You still got the season yep. to watch. You have all the episodes on DVD if you want them. Yes. But you know, a, a, a series to air on cable for seven seasons is, is quite a nice run. Yeah, it really is. And you know, Sons of Anarchy is one of those shows that never really got the attention it deserved. Mm-hmm. And anything else that you have a fondness for? Yeah, I really enjoy uh, Entourage. You like Entourage? Actually, yeah, because I, I enjoy the the strange perspective on the, the um, lifestyle of someone right. who lives in Hollywood. So you're looking forward to an Entourage movie? Yes, I you am. You could be an entourage. You could be in there. I would I love to. See it. I would love uh, to. Casting agents, here he is. And I, could see you, I could see you being an entourage. Okay. Being a client of mm-hmm. um, Jeremy uh, Piven. Yes, Ari. His, Ari, Ari Gold, yeah. That's right. I know the show. I like the show. My son is completely addicted to it. Mm-hmm. Well, I wish you all the best with the Almighty Johnsons. I wish you all the best with your career here in the States. Thank you very much. And um, I look forward to seeing you back um, at the TCA. You know, we meet twice a year. Mm-hmm. All it takes is having a show on the air. And a group of 250 critics will be uh, will be critiquing you. Yes. But as I said, um, I was excited to have the opportunity to speak to you because um, of the show itself, of the response it's getting, and I think you're poised for some very big things. So I thank you very much. Thank you very much, Spirit. And give us your website address where we can find you. Sure. It's uh, it's my name, EmmettSkilton.com, and it's same for Twitter, Instagram. And spell it so anyone people are home with their pens. It's E M M E T T S K I L T O N. Great. Thank you very much, my friend. Good luck to you, and I will see you soon. Take care. I am Mark Berman from TVMI, and I will see you back next time. Have a great day.